Tide Podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello. Around the block and around the world. Where will we go today? This is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. Representing type 2, who am I, Sammy? You are Dobie Maxwell, the amazing comedian and radio show. Thank you. You're representing type 1, vivacious, effervescent, always in the know. You're Sammy Parker. And this episode of JMT is brought to you by who? The Diabetes App. Of course, as it always is, a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics plus their supporters. What can we find here, Sammy? You can find Dobie and me on the Diabetes App and community and resources here. Sammy, we always find fun to have when we do our podcast. Today, we're going to delve deep into the affairs of the heart love relationships. We're like the Dr. Phil of diabetes. I know. I am really excited about this one because it's something I think, you know, in the diabetes community, there's a lot of topics that you feel like you already know about and whatnot. And this is definitely not one I feel like I know about and also how to manage it. And so we have a lucky, lucky and very special guest today. It's Mark Heyman. And he said, hey, man. (laughs) And Mark is a diabetes psychologist and I feel like I can call you Dr. Mark, right? Because... You can call me Dr. Mark, call me doctor. Mark, call me Phil, whatever right. you want to call me. Just don't call you late for dinner. <laughs> yeah, my wife calls me that, but... <laughs> Do you want to give um, Mark a little bit of background on yourself really quick so audience has a... Listeners have a little background? Yeah, you bet. So I'm Dr. Mark Heyman. You can call me Dr. Mark. Um, I'm a diabetes psychologist and certified diabetes care education specialist. So, and my work focuses on people who live with type 1 diabetes. I have been living with type 1 diabetes myself for 23 years now, and I do a lot of work. So I see patients in my practice here in San Diego, but I also have a podcast called the Diabetes Psychologist Podcast. I recently wrote a book called Diabetes Sucks, and you can handle it. And then I have a variety of digital programs people can access. My goal is to make sure that people with type 1 diabetes have the mental health support they need, and also helping people to reimagine what mental health support for type 1 diabetes looks like. It's not just seeing a therapist in their office or nothing. There's lots of resources, including this type of podcast, in between where people can get understanding and support in their lives with type 1 diabetes. Dr. Mark, I don't want to butt in here. I have type 2, and uh, as you know, and and, and diabetics know, 9 out of 10 of us are here too, so I'm not trying to downgrade what you do, but I think a lot of the things that you just said apply to type 2s as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially people with type 2 diabetes who are on intensive insulin therapy, who are taking insulin with their meals and are de- dealing with things like high and low blood sugar, and especially low blood sugar. It for sure, it can apply to people with type 2 diabetes as well. I just wanted to bring us to the party too. We didn't want to crash the party. I'm glad you're here. It's good. So we're glad you're here. We want to hear about what you have to say. Yeah. So I kind of thought, I find it very interesting because when I was diagnosed, I was 12 and I I don't vividly remember this, but I know my parents talked about it that I don't think I was in the room and they told my parents this. Maybe I was, but I don't remember. But that having like a child with diabetes puts a strain on a marriage. And I've always thought that's really interesting because I think I look at it from like two angles of like now when I hopefully eventually am married and like have diabetes or just in a relationship in general, how it kind of actually affects it because I do have a boyfriend right now and he's awesome and so supportive and everything. But I think it'd be very interesting to hear from your perspective of like the biggest kind of struggles and uh, barriers that result from either living with diabetes and being in a relationship and then also having a child with diabetes and being the parents of. Yeah. What do you want to start? Dovi, you choose. Where do you want to start? (laughs) Well, I think... Well, Dovi is a lady friend. Sorry, lady friend, if you're listening. Well, uh, I don't think she's listening because diabetes is not a part of it. But I think it totally is. You know, it's, being a parent is a strain anyway, I would imagine. And that's just another thing, especially if the parent does not have diabetes. Do your parents, Sammy, do not, correct? No. <laughs> that's got to be a strain. Dr. Mark, what do you think about yeah. that? I mean, it's, just, it's a whole new thing if it ain't you. Yeah, for sure. So when parents have a child who's diagnosed with diabetes, it changes the dynamic of the relationship. A good relationship is focused on the other person. So if you're in a marriage or a relationship, you know, the other person is generally your priority. And with kids being a priority as well, in my professional opinion, the kids are going to have a hard time relating and and having a good life if their parents have a challenging relationship. But then all of a sudden, when the relationship starts to focus away from the couple and onto the child, when it does, when the child diagnosed diabetes, that can cause lots of stress. First of all, it can make the relationship more challenging because the, the people aren't spending time together anymore or as much time together. But then also they're worried about their child. 
and they may have challenges and differences in ways of accepting the diagnosis. You know, some people are very accepting and other people may have a longer road to acceptance um, of the diagnosis. So when there's a difference in between the couple, the parents of a child, um, that can make things difficult and make them feel disconnected, both because they're focusing on their child more than they're focusing on each other, as well as they may disagree or be at different places in their, their traumatic journey of having a child with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes for that matter. Yeah, I mean, I can totally understand and see that because I mean, my mom, obviously, shout out to the dads. Dad, you're great. Love you. But the moms, you know, like a lot of moms are the ones who are like, okay, I'm going to be the one that's like giving her her insulin or doing this and doing that. So I can see that as far as like time goes. And then just spending time worrying about their kids. And And I'll be perfectly honest here. CGM has done us lots of favors and also done us no favors in this way. Because when a a child is diagnosed with diabetes right now, generally speaking, they are offered and given a CGM right away. And then their parents have this other thing, their phone, to focus on all the time, their their child's blood sugar, which then completely distracts them from their life, their relationship with their spouse, their work, other things like that. And that distraction really has an impact on relationships. Well, we have had other guests on the past that talk about how uh, a mistake, how big it is to be a perfectionist with diabetes and everybody's is cure is different. So it just, it fascinates me with some parents that don't have it would probably be perfectionist through their kids. You know, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, is a little Egbert's blood sugar is not perfect today. Let's worry about that. And that puts pressure and stress and strain and it makes a hard situation really hard. Well, and then we could have a whole conversation about time in range. And I see some teenagers in my practice and almost without exception, in the first session, their parents come in and they say, little Johnny is doing a horrible job with his diabetes. His time in range is 65%. I look at them and I say, well, that sounds like it's, he's doing pretty well. And no, Johnny needs to have a 90% or higher time in range. He needs to have an A. And I say, well, I've had diabetes for 23 years. I'm a professional in this field. And my time in range is 65, maybe a little bit higher than that, but not much higher than that most weeks. And I think I'm doing just fine. And most doctors would agree with me. And they have a hard time conceptualizing that perfection with diabetes or it doesn't exist. But good diabetes management is having a time in range of about 70%, which in their minds is a C in school. So the difference between what a quote unquote good time in range for diabetes is and what a quote unquote good grade in school is is very different. And parents have a hard time seeing the difference. And so they're not perfect with their, their child's blood sugar. They, they take responsibility for that. They're doing something wrong and they're setting themselves up for failure. Yeah, I think too. So like something I realized with like my parents. So my mom, her side of the family, like kind of just anxiety runs in her side. It definitely runs my dad's side too, but more so my mom's. So I think for me, I was talking to this other kid who's 12 and he just got diagnosed. And it's funny because I I was kind of saying how there's a lot of times that I'll take a shot and then I go low randomly. And I was already, I was high. And then I drop and go low. And being my mom, I know she can't help it, but she's like, well, why did you do that? You knew that was going to happen. And like starts the questioning. And I'm like, mom, you don't understand my thought process. I was working out. I had a smoothie before it had protein. So normally when I stop working out, the protein binds and then I go back up and this whole thing. And she's like, but I don't understand. And then that's when like my dad, it'll chime in and he'll be like, Because I feel like there's sometimes that is where I can almost see like arguments occurring because there's like normally I feel like one perfectionist of the parent with the blood sugars and the other one is like, you got to be understanding. Like, is that something that's common more so to be a problem? Because I feel like in my family, at least my dad is awesome and so great. But like, it's definitely my mom who more wants it to be, you know, like great. Like at the time or like be like, well, let's fix it. Yeah. And, and my that, dad's that more happens, understanding, I think. With- that happens a lot. Yeah. And that disagreement can be challenging for relationships and for marriages. Uh, but also, yeah. I think that it's it, part of this is a diabetes education challenge for for us as a community in that the reason why your blood sugar went low after you took insulin is for no reason other than the fact that you have diabetes. And sometimes <laughs> that's that's the best explanation that there is. And, you know, parents are used to saying, you know, why did that, why did this happen? Why did you get that fight? Or why did you get a bad grade on that test? And generally speaking, there's an explanation for it. Well, you know, I didn't study hard enough. But when your blood sugar goes high or low, sometimes there's a reason and great, then learn from that. But lots of times, the only reason that at least the one that we can identify is the fact that you have diabetes. And for parents who want, especially for parents these days who are more helicopter-ish, especially parents of people with diabetes, 
that lack of clarity and lack of um of reason uh, and way to fix it is really challenging. And then especially when parents disagree and don't see things, don't have the same perspective on that, it can make relationships challenging. I was going to say, uh, do you have any tips to maybe cool it down? I, I was a sports coach for a while. And the, uh, the reason I stopped is because the helicopter, that's a term that came later. It used to be like a, you know, a stage parent or someone that just could, the kid was fine. It's the parent I couldn't stand. And I got to believe you as a therapist, it's obviously your profession, but is there a way that you can, you know, take a chill pill, cool them out a little bit? The way that I do it is I use myself as an example. I say, you know, I know, I know you want your, your child to be healthy and thrive and do great in their life, even with diabetes. And I can tell you and I can show you my CGM. If you go on my Instagram stories from this morning, you can see last night was, it was a train wreck for me. But I, I show them that as a way to show them I'm, I do this for a living. I'm a professional. I'm healthy, but my blood sugars are not always in range. And that's okay. Yeah. And so using myself as an example is, is one way that I do it. And then providing that education, letting people know that there's no evidence to show that intermittent high blood sugars and your little spikes in your blood sugar have any impact on long-term outcomes. And that mm -hmm. as long as people are putting in the work and doing what they need to do to manage their diabetes, if their blood sugars are up and down, that's okay. It's really the input that's more important than the output. Because the input, when done correctly and under the supervision of a doctor, the output will yeah. come. No problem. But if we're so worried about the output, then the grade, then we're going to be in trouble. And then, you know, helping, just giving them the education and helping them to see with the empathic eye that their child doing the best that they can. And I think that using myself as an example of showing them that, you know, this is what I do and I'm not perfect and that's okay, helps them a lot. The Diabetes App is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the Diabetes App, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The Diabetes App has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the Diabetes App today and connect with us right on the app. DieStrong is an online telehealth platform that connects you to medical and holistic professionals to help you manage your diabetes. Find registered dietitians, nutritionists, certified diabetes educators, and more without the hassle of having to go into a doctor's office. Wait, 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 wait. You mean a lazy bum like me can have appointments right from my computer? Sign me up. That's right, Dobie. And this week, our listeners can use promo code JMT25 for 25% off their first visit. Yeah, don't try to cheat and go to JMT26 because you're not going to get 26. It's 25. Go to www.diastronghealth.com. That's www.diastronghealth.com. Or did you strike a nerve with there, Dr. Mark? It's, it, I've been in situations on a date where she is my instant dietitian, whether I want it or not. You can't have that. There's too much salad dressing. And then it gets to the point where any attractiveness that she had is gone by the end of one meal. I'm so sorry to hear that. Good sign that that's but not a good person to date. No. Well, I'm glad I found out rather than, you know, spending money on a wedding and then have to go through it. <laughs> so it cost me a meal and I'm, I'm pretty cheap anyways. So. It's true because like last night I was with my boyfriend and we were about to go for a little stroll because he was taking me to do an excursion. And the excursion actually was plant-based ice cream. Because Dr. Mark, I'm I'm plant-based. So it was very exciting. But on our way, he's like, So do you have glucose? And I was like, I'll be fine. And then he's like, Why don't we just get a little baggie and put them in your candy pack? And I was like, No, it's fine. And then he's like, No, let's do that. But it's like, he's really awesome about it. And I don't he like researches about it on his own and stuff. And I'm like, how do you know this kind of stuff? But it's funny because I've it's always been like a benchmark. Like I'm like, they yeah, like you said, if they can't deal with diabetes, like eh, you're out. Yeah. I I have something called I'm fine syndrome, which is when my blood sugar is low, I'm fine. Leave me alone. Oh my I, gosh. I, I, I got it. And so my wife knows this. We've been married for 11 years and we, we've come to an agreement over the years that I have I'm fine syndrome. She knows it. However, if she gives me a glass of orange juice or a glucose tablet or something, I have to eat it. Like there's no, no questions asked. If she hands it to me, I have to eat it. Because she knows when I'm not fine. She, she knows me well. She can tell in my eyes and in my, in my voice. Yes, the score. And so setting those, sort, setting those sort of boundaries and agreements yeah. can be extremely helpful, especially in relationships that are a little bit further along. Yeah, I have the I'm fine syndrome. I literally go, I'm fine. 
He says no. Everyone has I'm fine syndrome. We think we can pl- we think we can plow through those low blood sugars and I'm like, I'm 40, I'm fine. <laughs> I've been there. I like that, you know, a good situation, I think, could test in a diabetic relationship when you have it and your your partner doesn't, potential partner. I like to fake a seizure on a first date. <laughs> you know, when the ambulance shows up, then it's, ah, just kidding. Okay, we can get along. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but only a little, because I think sometimes you almost have to, you have to let yourself hang out as is, because if they don't accept you and you get start to get some some feelings for this person, you'll do the, I, I'm fine more than you need to when you're not fine. Yeah. Because the mind doesn't listen to the heart. Sorry to say that. And I don't care. It just is. If you like somebody, you like them. What do you think, Dr. Mark, are some of the issue or like some of the most common issues in relationships with those that um, are either like have type two or type one diabetes and like the other person doesn't? What are like the biggest problems or barriers? Keeping people out of their diabetes, like having this separation. I know people who have been married for many years and their spouse doesn't know anything about diabetes. They don't even know when the person's not feeling well because they feel this is my burden to carry. And I don't want to put it on anybody else. And I think that's about the worst thing that you can do. You're in a partnership, you're in a relationship, and you should be working together and having the person at least know what's going on. In my relationship, we don't talk about diabetes much. I talk about diabetes all, all day long at work. So I don't need to talk about it at home. But we know... I'm able to communicate when I'm not feeling well, when my blood sugar is high. And my wife knows how to manage diabetes if she has to. Yeah. And I think that kind of openness is important. It doesn't mean that you're like talking about it all the time. All it means is that there's a communication as to, you know, what is diabetes and how is, how is it managed? And that sort of just openness about what the facts are, but also about how you're doing today is critical for support, but also for safety. Yeah. What do you think too, though, about like, Obviously, as you know, like high blood sugars <laughs> cause irritability. So in terms of like the person that's living with type one or type two, and if you are having like a roller coaster of blood sugars, what are some like, what are the best ways do you think to cope with that? Because sometimes, you know, you'll just respond out of instinct, like, oh my God, leave me alone. Cause you're like, hi. Mm-hmm. And what do you think are like some of the best ways to just kind of separate it? If you are, have a high blood sugar or have a low blood sugar and you're like about to freak the freak out. And you know it. Yeah. Because oftentimes people don't know that that's what's happening and they just, they're just irritable. The best thing, if you know me at all, you know that I talk about mindfulness all the time. And mindfulness, you know, the definition of it is observing your experience without judging it. But what it really does, is it gives you a separation. You're able to say, my blood sugar is high and feeling irritable. This is how I'm going to respond. So your response is going to be tied and glued to your emotion or your feeling. It means that you have a feeling and emotion. That's what it is. But your response is going to be a choice. Okay. And it takes practice. You're not going to be perfect at it all the time. But by just taking a beat, taking a step back, um, recognizing how you're feeling, and then making a choice about how you want to respond, especially with someone that you love, is really the best piece of advice that I can give. Again, as well as letting the person know so they can call you out on it. Because again, if the person that you're with doesn't know that you're on a roller coaster day, and they just think that you're pissed off about something, then you have a big communication gap. So letting them know, and they can support you in in helping you to take that beat and and observe your experience without getting mad at yourself and without getting mad at them. It's just a complication in relationships and relationships are hard enough without it. So it's good to talk about it, I think, because some people don't. And then it builds up and builds up and builds up. And then it's the screaming match in the middle of the restaurant. And we don't want to get to that, do we? I don't. Yeah, no. I don't either. No, I I do. Because I think it's something that I don't know. I was always like very open with diabetes. So that was like something I kind of got lucky that I just randomly have been like that. But I know a lot of girls, some guys, but mostly girls that have diabetes and are, are very shy about it. And it's so tough because I know it's, it's easy for me to say like to them, like if you're going to be shy and timid about it, it's not going to work, but it's easier saying that to someone than doing it if they feel that way. And so I think that's where it's like hard because I want to be like, if you're going to be close about it and be in the bathroom, like he's not going to understand, like that's not going to work. It's going to be like, you guys are hopping around like the big elephant in the room and then it's eventually going to come up and you're going to have to deal with it, whether it's six months from now or a year from now. So like might as well just get it out in the open now. I know it's a lot harder like doing it than just saying it. I had someone on my podcast about a year ago, a young lady who was had been in a relationship for one year and she had never told her boyfriend that she had diabetes. How she did that, I have no idea. 
And the reason wow. she was on my podcast is we were doing a coaching episode and she had a new boyfriend and she wanted to know how to tell him because she didn't want the, to repeat the, what happened last time. And we got her a point on that episode where we, she was able to tell him that for a year, I, I, that blew my mind that she had, had somehow hit it for that long. Imagine the guy though, he's going to be shocked when that D-bomb gets dropped on him over there. The dinner. thing is, I'm sure he knew. I, I can't imagine he didn't know. Wow. Well, she does needles. She's a heroin addict, but I love her anyway. Oh, she's diabetic. Thank goodness. It happens. <laughs> wow. It's actually interesting because I feel like I feel like it like benefits me. I'm like, yeah, I have diabetes. So, you know, I just always had to be very mature. And like I feel like it's like my bonus points. I'm like, yeah, I'm pulling out the D card. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, that once again, uh, the time goes fast when you have fun in these episodes. Dr. Mark, thanks for joining us. This was uh, very informative. And uh, we don't usually go down that. Like Sammy said, we don't go down this road very often. And it's uh, I think it's refreshing. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I learned a lot. So thank you so so much for coming on. And I think our listeners are going to really like this episode, especially parents, because I think that there's a, a gap there for parents. And they don't feel like they a lot of times will like listen or get the help that they actually need to get. They think like, how much could I put a strain on the marriage? Like, meh. And then I like hear about a lot of instances and I'm like, oh, they clearly should have. Now, we do have a question of the pod we'd like to ask our listeners. Uh, Sammy, you want to ask Dr. Mark? Yes. So our question of the pod is, has your diabetes ever been an issue in your relationship? Yes, it has been. I won't go into detail, but when I was first married, I didn't have a CGM. I, I need to say that. But when I, when I have low blood sugars, especially, I had a couple really severe low blood sugars about 10 years ago. I get violent. And I, I never hit my wife. Please don't hear that. Let me say that. But I remember there's one, there's one time when I was in the middle of the night, my lips were going really low and um, she was trying to wake me up. And apparently I like kind of swung my arm like involuntarily. And I woke up, you know, from my low and she was in the bathroom kind of very scared of me. And we had to have some really hard conversations after that about these rules and about how to, how I could better manage my blood sugar. And it's very soon after that, I got a CGM. Uh, which has been a life changer because yeah. nothing has happened. I had never had a severe low since then, but those are some really, really scary times. And they, I, you know, I will never forget them because I love my wife so much and never want to scare her. But, you know, she was scared of me and not because of it. It wasn't me, but it was yeah. my body and my low that was challenging. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. That's right. It's honest, man. That's really, re it's real. Sammy, what about you? Any uh, relationship issues with you? Yeah. So in a past relationship, it just wasn't, cared for like how we were saying it should be cared for in a relationship so like when he was aware of it it was oh then he would care and was aware but his brain was so elsewhere that it just mind add was just not there so it was like i would be expressing something and he literally wasn't listening and then would talk about something else and that was really tough for me because i'd be like okay, he doesn't even understand, you know, it just was like, he didn't understand. Like, I didn't feel like he was taking it on. Not that he has to take it on as his own, but like, I didn't feel like that. Like, and I want to feel like my partner is there with me. And it's been very, very refreshing because my boyfriend is amazing and is like, treats it like it's his. But I remember that was a really tough issue. And I learned a lot. I learned a big lesson from that. What about you, Doby? Yeah, the woman was a, a, a doctor without having her medical license and telling me what to eat and where and go and what. And it's like, you know what? We're going to pull this plug and uh, hopefully be friends in another life because I don't want to be around you in this one. And I mean that in a friendly and a customer service kind of way because that's what I'm about. So <laughs> anyway, let's uh, uh, answer the question in the pod if you haven't. I'm sure everyone's got a relationship story. It's part of it. Yeah. We're keeping it real. How can people find us, Sammy? Okay, so well, first off, you can find Dr. Mark at the Diabetes Psychologist on Instagram and his Diabetes Psychologist podcast, which I actually listen to while I walk. So love it. It's great. Amazing. I also want to read your book now. <laughs> I'm going to order it. Where can people order it and find it? They can either order, they can order it on Amazon. It's the best place. Oh, amazing. That's where I was headed after this. And it's called Diabetes Sucks and You Can Handle It. And make sure you put in the entire name because if you put in Diabetes Sucks, you get diabetes socks, oh. all kinds of options. Ah. So <laughs> Amazon has not gotten the algorithm down yet to know that diabetes sucks means my book. I think it means things you put on your feet. That's really funny. Still a great title though. Good good for you for coming Amazing. up with Amazing. Excellent title. Yes. And then you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at just my type pod, underscore Facebook, at just my type pod, and our hashtag, just my type pod. But again, please answer the question of the pod. Give us a five-star rating and review. Give the Diabetes Psychologist Podcast a five-star rating and review because we want to build the diabetes community and get together and join the conversation. So Dr. Mark, thank you so much for coming on again. It's been a pleasure. 
And we hope to have you back on soon. Thank you so much. We appreciate Dr. Mark. We appreciate you. We appreciate our pod squad, Queen Elizabeth, back at uh, Mission Control, along with Zach, our intern. Thanks for listening. Sammy, put the sugar-free cherry on the healthy Sunday one more time. Say lovey, baby. This is the Just My Type podcast.